What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word mathcore? Maybe it's the genre of music where all the members are required to have gotten an A in high school calculus. No, it's not that, although that would be pretty interesting. Instead, mathcore is a genre of music that I happen to really like. In today's video, I'm going to be going over what mathcore is, its history, and some bands I like. It's been a while since I've done either a genre guide video or a heavy metal video, so this is a long time coming. I should also mention that I'm going out of my way to make this a little bit shorter than my past few videos since ugh, those were absolute behemoths. Welcome to What is Mathcore? Let's cut to the chase. Mathcore is a genre that takes the heaviness of hardcore punk and extreme metal and combines it with constantly shifting tempos, uneven time signatures, dissonant harmonies, and an overall sense of chaos. Despite this, mathcore is still a very organized genre, as every note is played for a reason. I said the same thing in my noise music video, and I'll say it again here because it fits just as well. Many bands also take an influence from progressive rock artists, namely King Crimson as their debut album, In the Court of the Crimson Kings, is notoriously so chaotic that listening to it while under the influence can induce psychotic episodes. Not all influences came from the rock umbrella either, as the Dillinger Escape Plan guitarist Ben Weinman would cite electronic artists such as Aphex Twin, Chad, a Tecker, and Square Pusher as influences. According to Wikipedia, which I can use as a source because this isn't an academic paper, legendary hardcore band Black Flag was one of the main precursors of mathcore. On albums such as Slip It In and Family Man, they included elements such as changing time signatures and jazz-influenced improvisation. The late 80s and early 90s brought on bands such as Fugazi, Drive Like Jehu, and The Jesus Lizard. While calling these bands mathcore wouldn't exactly be accurate, they were part of a new wave of hardcore bands bringing in considerable influence from other genres. It was only a matter of time before mathcore came to be. Let's take a trip down to St. Louis to check out some fellows known as Dazzling Killmen. Dazzling Killmen were only active for five years in the 90s. Their most listened to song on Spotify has only 51,000 listens, so you would be forgiven if you had never heard of this band before. However, their second and final album, 1993's Face of Collapse, would have an immense influence on the mathcore genre. Mathcore isn't listed among the album's genres on Wikipedia, but listening to it, I would argue that this is somewhat of a proto-mathcore release, if that makes sense. The opening track, Staring Contest, begins with just dissonant guitar, and while it segues into an actual song, it lets you know what kind of album you're in for. Other highlights include Bone Fragments, which starts out chaotic before transitioning into a section that has gentle drumming, pretty guitar playing, and vocals that are almost crooning. The nearly 14 minute title track starts out quiet before getting all noisy, and it seems almost improvised at times. The final few minutes alternate between silence and bursts of loudness before ending with a crescendo. This album is an absolute gem. Throughout the late 90s, mathcore became more established as a genre. Two bands, in particular, would further solidify what the genre was. They were Tacoma, Washington's Botch and Kansas City, Missouri's Coalesce. They released some of the first albums that are generally considered to be proper mathcore whatever that means. For Botch, their debut album, American Nervoso, was released after six years of performing and songwriting. This preparation time shows as it feels far more cohesive than many bands' debut efforts, especially in an album as inherently chaotic as Mathcore. The follow-up, We Are The Romans, is also super sick. Random little thing, I love this little cowboy logo that's on all of their posthumous releases. It just looks so wholesome. For Coalesce, their debut album, Give Them Rope, is solid, but it's their sophomore effort, Functioning on Impatience, where I feel they really shine. The release clocks in at just over 20 minutes in runtime. In other words, I could listen to this entire album in the time it takes me to walk to campus every day. Not a single second is wasted, though, and you almost don't even notice how short it is. The follow-up, 012 Revolution in Just Listening, is similarly short, though it adds an entire four extra minutes of music. Botch and Coalesce both eventually broke up, and although Botch is currently embarking on a reunion tour, they've said that they have no plans to record music. 
That's probably for the best, since both of their discographies are perfect the way they are. Random fun fact, the drummer of Coalesce, James DeWeese, was formerly the touring keyboardist for My Chemical Romance. Talk about selling out. Mathcore was steadily gaining momentum as a respected style of music. One band, however, would come into existence that would blow the faces off everyone who listened to them. I'm talking about the one, the only, the Dillinger Escape Plan. Probably the best musical act to ever come out of New Jersey. Okay, second best. The Dillinger Escape Plan is arguably the most well-known band in the mathcore genre. This can be attributed to the fact that they didn't just release two or three albums before breaking up, their ability to write good melodies when needed, and the fact that their music is just that damn good. Founded by the aforementioned Mr. Ben Weinman, their debut, 1999's Calculating Infinity, is one of the most chaotic yet tight albums I've ever listened to. It includes masterpieces such as the balls-to-the-wall opening track Sugar Coated Sour, as well as 43% Burnt, which if I had to show someone what mathcore is, I would choose this song. Their second album, Miss Machine, added proper melodies and conventional song structures. The album is still very much chaotic and random at most points, although they demonstrated that they could be more subdued when they needed to. Unretrified is a great example of this, with its funky bass line and melodic singing in the chorus. The addition of vocalist Greg Pichado makes a big difference, as his vocal range extends the possibilities of what the band can do. 2007's Ire Works would be their most mainstream release, although with enough weirdness thrown in to satisfy their old fans. It includes Milk Lizard, a song with a rhythm that almost makes you want to dance, and Black Bubblegum, which remains possibly the poppiest song they've done. The album closes with Mouth of Ghosts, a song that's centered mostly around bass, drums, and piano, before the guitars kick in towards the end and there's a satisfying conclusion to end things. The Dillinger Escape Plan would release three more albums before disbanding in 2017. Operation Paralysis, which is my personal least favorite, but still an enjoyable record, One of Us is the Killer, which is an absolute banger, and the swan song, Dissociation, whose closing title track is usually the most emotional song they've ever written. Fun fact, their final show ever was played in my hometown of New York City the day after my 15th birthday. I didn't go because I didn't know them very well at that point. missed opportunity. One band I want to mention really quickly is a group called Psyopus. Their music is centered around the avant-garde technique of their guitarist, Christopher Arp. He uses tapping extensively, and he'll also use his whammy bar to warble the sound with great effect. He makes a guitar sound even less like a guitar than I thought possible, if that makes sense. One of their songs I really like is called this is gonna get me demonetized, Scissor Fuck Paper Doll. Arp's guitar sounds like someone screaming, and it had my eyes bulging the first time I ever listened to it. My favorite song of theirs is Duct Tape Smile. It's a great example of the whole band's prowess. The vocal screams are spot on, the bass is phenomenal, and the drumming fits the chaotic guitar playing perfectly. They're no longer around, but their three studio albums serve as a great example of guitar experimentation. One band I want to spend a little more time talking about is another group from New Jersey, The Number 12 Looks Like You. I'd heard their name mentioned quite a few times before, but I hadn't really listened to them prior to my making this video. Good god, these guys were a surprise. Their 2003 debut album, Put On Your Rosy Red Glasses, is unbelievable. It's only 22 minutes, but it's a killer 22 minutes. The opening track, Don't Get Blood On My Prada Shoes, is heavier than I can describe, and it's honestly kind of frightening. The Wikipedia page takes the time to point out, the music on this release is much heavier than the band's later releases. Now you tell me. They can still have conventional song elements when needed, as Jesus and Tori has a rather sweet guitar solo. Possibly my favorite song on the album is If These Bullets Could Talk. The screams of dual frontmen Jesse Corman and Justin Pedrick sound absolutely anguished, even more when the clean guitar kicks in and they keep going. Document Grace Bud is an interlude track that features a reading of a letter written by serial killer Albert Fish in which he details his murdering and cannibalizing of the titular Grace Bud. 
I have nothing to say. <laughs> Finally, Empty Calm is a finger-picked guitar song that shows off the band's musical range. After releasing three more albums, the band would go on hiatus in 2010 before reforming in 2016 without their singer and second guitarist. They do seem able to make this reduced lineup work, as their comeback album 2019's Wild Gods is super good. Overall, it sounds a lot more polished, as Jesse Corman's clean singing is much improved. There's also an increased use of unique instruments, such as the string and horn section on Interspecies, the saxophone on Sword Swallower, and what sounds like an Eru on Ruin the Smile. I'm really glad I discovered these guys, and I hope you guys check them out. Maybe they'll be as delightfully surprised as I was. The final band I'm going to be discussing today will take us across the pond to Sheffield, England. Founded by James Spence and his sister, Eva, Rolo Tomasi is another band I was pleasantly surprised by when I started doing musical research for this video. The fact that they have a girl singer gives them a far greater range than many other bands in the genre. Their debut album, 2008's Hysterics, is all over the place, but in a good way. Wikipedia has punk jazz as one of its genres, and it fits perfectly. I love Turbulence, Macabre Charade, and Fofteen, not a typo, are good examples of this, going from really heavy chaos into smooth, gentle sections. Ava's not the only sibling who brings the A-game, as James's keyboards add a sweet touch. On the opening track, Oh Hello Ghost, they have a very 8-bit sound to them, and at certain points on other songs they sound almost whimsical. On Abraxes, they're paired with a heavy guitar breakdown and it sounds amazing. The 14-minute closing title track includes all of the album's influences. Overall, this is a much softer album. After listening to their debut album, I felt it only appropriate to check out their most recent release. 2022's Where Myth Becomes Memory. Closer is a song focusing on keyboards and clean vocals that no way would have been included on Hysterics. This is still a heavy album, though. A lot of songs will start out super heavy and crazy before balancing out with a soft second half. Some good examples of this are Mutual Ruin, Labyrinthine, and To Resist Forgetting. I also really love the opening track, Almost Always which sounds really majestic with its clean vocals and synths. It also has a distorted guitar track that reminds me a lot of My Bloody Valentine. So yeah, these guys are an amazing band that I'll have to keep listening to. Oh, and uh, Eva is married to Jesse Corman of the number 12. My mentioning their bands back to back was very much intentional. For people who like headbanging but also like being caught off guard, mathcore is the perfect genre. It's a diverse enough umbrella for all sorts of people, and I hope you check out at least one of the bands I mentioned in this video. If you're gonna do only one, I suggest it be Dillinger, but that's just my opinion. If you like it, then great, you have more music to add to your rotation. If not, hey, at least you tried something new. If you're still watching by now, I just want to say thank you so much for giving me your time. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like and hit subscribe. I upload these videos whenever I can, and I always have a ton of fun making them. Hopefully you have as much fun watching them. If you have an idea for a video you want me to do, drop it down in the comments. Who knows? Maybe I'll get to it. I'm RobbieJ2734. I will see you when I see you next.